In this short video, we're going to look at solving linear models. Uh, that is linear phenomena that are modeled using linear differential equations. So we've already seen a number of these. In fact, we probably saw these back when we took algebra and certainly saw them in uh, second semester calculus. So I'm not going to discuss these in detail. However, something that we may not have worked with before are these mixture problems, these salt tank problems. So let's take a look at them in a little more detail. So we're going to start with just a couple of examples. Uh, here we have a tank which holds 300 gallons of brine. That doesn't mean the volume of the tank is 300. That means the volume of the brine inside the tank is 300 gallons. And brine with a concentration of two pounds per gallon is being poured into the tank. And at the same time, the brine after it's thoroughly mixed uh, is being pumped out at a rate of three gallons per minute. And so we just like to find an equation. We're not gonna necessarily solve it at this point, uh, but I think we can. So let's, let's see if we do that. We're gonna find an equation describes the amount of salt in the tank, given that the uh, tank initially contains 50 pounds of salt. So we have an initial value problem here. Uh, when we first talked about these problems, remember the way that we set it up is we said that A is going to be the amount of salt in the tank at time T. And the way that we uh, calculate our differential or set up our differential equation is we find an expression for the rate at which salt enters the tank, and then we subtract off the rate at which salt leaves the tank. Now, the rate at which it enters the tank is straightforward. We're told that the concentration is two pounds per gallon and that it is coming in at a rate of three gallons per minute. And so if I just multiply those together, I'll get my six pounds per minute. So six pounds of salt are entering the tank every minute. Now we have uh, three gallons per minute of the completely mixed brine leaving, but what's the concentration of the brine? Well, it depends on the amount of salt and, and that amount of salt is changing. So we'll take the amount of salt and divide that by the amount of brine. That gives me the concentration of the mixture that's leaving the tank. And we'll multiply that times the three gallons per minute. So now we have a uh, linear differential equation. We can actually solve this. We'll use an integrating factor. Uh, instead of y, we have a here, but a is our dependent variable. And so we'll just factor one over 100. I'm sorry, factor integrate one over 100. Uh, and then our integrating factor will be e to the power of one over 100t, or e to the power of 0.01t. So we'll get a new differential equation by multiplying both sides by our integrating factor, and then we will integrate both sides. Of course, we get our uh, constant of integration. And we'll divide both sides by e to the power of 0.01t. And so now the next thing we need to do is impose our initial condition to find the value of the uh, parameter C. And so we know that uh, at time zero, we have 50 pounds in the, of salt in the tank. So do some algebra. So get our constant value of negative 550. And now we've got our solution. And so we can see that we have a transient term. So as t goes to infinity, the amount of salt in the tank approaches 600 pounds. And uh, that should make sense. The concentration which is coming in 
is two pounds per gallon. And so we're gonna maintain 300 gallons of brine. And so it's going to approach then a concentration of two gallons. I mean, so two pounds per gallon times 300 gallons. So we're, the amount of salt will approach 600. So in the second example, we're gonna change the problem slightly. We're gonna assume the tank is very large, much, much larger than 300 gallons. And we're only going to extract or pump out um, the brine at two gallons per minute. So we're still pumping in brine at three gallons per minute but we're only pumping it out at two gallons per minute. So the tank, the volume of brine in the tank is increasing. The tank is filling up. So how does that change our differential equation? Oops, went the wrong direction. So the volume of the tank is increasing at a rate of one gallon per minute. So after T minutes, the volume is 300 plus T gallons. So the volume, I'm sorry, the amount of salt or the rate at which the salt enters the tank has not changed, but now we're pumping out two gallons per minute. And the concentration is going to be the amount that we have divided by the volume, but now the volume depends on T. So can we still solve this differential equation? All right, let's set it up. That means that my integrating factor uh, would depend on this P of T, which is two over 300 plus T. Go ahead and integrate that. The output from the integral is not the integrating factor. We have to put that in the exponent of e, but since I've got e to the natural log of absolute value 300 plus t squared, uh, that's going to give me an integrating factor of, in parentheses, 300 plus t quantity squared. So when I multiply both sides, of the differential equation by the integrating factor. I get a new differential equation and I'll integrate both sides. And I need to find out my uh, value of C. I'm gonna go ahead and solve for A. I've just divided both sides by the integrating factor. And we're going to impose the same initial condition. And when I work out the arithmetic, I'm going to see that uh, C is going to be a rather large number, 49,500,000. But just recall that uh, that is being divided by 300 plus T in parentheses squared. So again, this is a transient term, but you can see what's happening here is that this term is going to grow without bound. So, um, and that makes sense, right? We're, we're just pumping in uh, brine and it, the concentration will simply continue to increase. It's unrealistic that it could continue to increase forever but uh, it can increase until the tank is full. And that's all we're gonna talk about for linear models today.